Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here on how to compute the Ronskian for a group of functions. So if we have a collection of a certain number of functions, n functions, the Ronskian is actually the determinant of a square matrix that includes a first row of all of the functions that you originally started with. For our second row of our square matrix where we're taking the determinant that will actually be filled with the first derivatives of all the original functions, it's important that your first function you keep all of its derivatives beneath it. The second function in your collection you keep all of its derivatives directly beneath it. We make sure we don't swap any of these. For those of you using Ronskians to solve second order equations, you'll have y1 and y2 and you'll go ahead and stop after the first derivative step so you'll actually only have four entries in your square matrix that you then take the determinant of to get your Ronskian. If you're dealing with more than two equations, let's say you need three rows and three columns, then your third row would have the second derivatives of all your original functions in your matrix. You would keep going down as many rows as you need to make a square matrix, and each row that we continue, we just take a higher order derivative each time. When our Ronskian is not equal to zero, that allows us to determine linear independence on a particular interval. Let's go ahead and look at a few examples here of computing some Ronskians and determining linear independence. So here we want to find the Ronskian for our functions e to the 4x and x e to the 4x. We're also going to state whether they are linearly independent on the real number line. So if we go ahead and compute our Ronskian, that will be the determinant of, oftentimes for determinant we can use straight line brackets around our matrix. So our first row is just going to include the functions e to the 4x and x e to the 4x. Our second row will then be the derivatives of these. So the derivative of e to the 4x goes below it, that is 4e to the 4x. And our derivative of x e to the 4x, that would be a product rule, so we go ahead and get e to the 4x plus 4x e to the 4x. And if we calculate this 2 by 2 determinant, then we will get the Ronskian. Now remember to find a 2 by 2 determinant, we do the main diagonal here minus what we get on the other diagonal. So we'll actually get for our Ronskian, if I take e to the 4x times this, we will get e to the 8x plus 4x e to the 8x, so that's our top left to bottom right diagonal, and then we'll subtract what we get on the opposite diagonal there. If I multiply those, I get 4x e to the 8x. And if I do the subtract here, you'll notice that these two terms will zero out. I'll actually get a Ronskian of e to the 8x, so that's my answer for the Ronskian there. And if I think about the expression e to the 8x on the real number line, in other words, plugging in any real number for x, will this ever be 0? And the answer is no, this exponential won't ever be 0. So these original functions here are actually linearly independent over all real numbers. Let's look at another. Here we have the Ronskian for 6e to the negative 2x and 5e to the negative 2x. I think you can see these are constant multiples of one another, so I think we know that we will get that these are not linearly independent, right, when we calculate our Ronskian. Let's go ahead and set this up. So our Ronskian is going to be the determinant of 6e to the negative 2x and 5e to the negative 2x as our first row. Second row, just derivatives of these, so the negative 2 comes out, we'll get negative 12 e to the negative 2x for that derivative. Derivative of 5e to the negative 2x, the negative 2 comes out, we get negative 10 e to the negative 2x. And so the determinant of that will be Chris minus cross here. So we'll actually get, or our top left to bottom right, we'll get negative 60 e to the negative 4x. And then if we subtract what's on the other diagonal, we get negative 60 e to the negative 4x as well, and then minus negative would be plus, so we get negative 60 of this exponential plus 60 of this exponential. That's going to be 0, so we get a Ronskian of 0, and no, these are not linearly independent, these are linearly dependent. And so we would, in second order equation terms, we would not want to call this a fundamental set of solutions for our second order equation. Let's now look at some cases where we're trying to find the Ronskian for three functions. So we've got x squared plus 3, 2x, and x squared plus 5x. So our Ronskian here is actually going to be a 3 by 3 determinant. 
So we have x squared plus 3, and 2x, and x squared plus 5x. All of those in our first row. Our second row will just be the derivatives of all these. So the derivative here is 2x, the derivative of this is 2, and the derivative of this is 2x plus 5. And then our next row will be the derivative of the second row, right? So the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of 2 is 0, and the derivative of 2x plus 5 is also 2. Now in order to do this Ronsky and you'll have to know how to do 3 by 3 determinants, so make sure that's something that you can do. We're going to go ahead and use a Laplace expansion. There are a few ways to sort of do this. I'm going to go ahead and expand the bottom row here. So I'm going to take my bottom left entry of 2, and I'm going to multiply by the minor matrix left over here. So we get 2 times the determinant of 2x, x squared plus 5x, 2 and 2x plus 5. Uh, it would technically be minus 0 times those four entries left, so plus 0 there. And then if I go ahead and expand this 2 here, I cross out the row and column that that 2 is in, so we would have 2 times, so say plus 2 times our minor matrix left over here, x squared plus 3, 2x, 2x, and 2. Again, however you do these 3 by 3 determinants is up to you. There's several ways to do this. Let's go ahead and figure this out. So we'll get 2 times this diagonal here would give us 4x squared plus 10x minus what we get on the other diagonal, 2 times x squared plus 5x, which would be 2x squared plus 10x plus nothing there, plus 2 times what we get from this 2 by 2 determinant. So we would have 2 times x squared plus 3, which would be 2x squared plus 6, minus the other diagonal here, which would be 4x squared. All right, let's go ahead and look at what we have here. So we have 2 times, I have 4x squared minus 2x squared, which would be 2x squared, and then 10x minus 10x would be no x's, so we just have that there. Plus, over here we have 2 times, if we have 2x squared minus 4x squared, that's negative 2x squared plus 6. And then if we go ahead and compute all this, we'll get 4x squared, we'll get negative 4x squared, and then we'll get 12. So we actually get that the Ronskian is 12, and of course that's never going to be 0. There's not even an x for me to plug into, right, anything on the real number line. So we get a Ronskian that is 12, that is non-zero of course, and so that means these three functions are linearly independent over the real number line. All right, we'll do one more 3 by 3 example for you. Here we've got the functions 1, cosine 2x, and sine squared x. So our Ronskian is going to be the determinant of 1 cosine 2x sine squared x and their first two derivatives, right? So next row would be derivatives of these. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of cosine 2x would be negative 2 sine 2x. Derivative of sine squared x would be a chain rule, right? So we'd get 2 sine x. Power would go down by 1. Derivative of the inside is cosine x. So we get 2 sine x cosine x, and then the derivative of the second row would be the third row, so 0 here again. The derivative of negative 2 sine 2x would be negative 4 cosine of 2x. And the derivative of 2 sine x cosine x would be a product rule, so if we take the derivative of 2 sine x, that would be 2 cosine x. I have another cosine x, so that's actually 2 cosine squared x. And then my other half of the product rule, if I leave this alone, take the derivative of cosine x would be negative sine x, so we'd actually get negative 2 sine squared x. Now if we're doing this 3 by 3 determined and we do an expansion, it's actually most efficient to go ahead and expand the first column, because for each of these entries we would get 0, so we'll just go ahead and need to expand this one entry. So 1 times, if we mark out the row and column that 1 is in, we get this the 2 by 2 determinant here, 2 sine 2x, 
2 sine x cosine x, negative 4 cosine 2x, 2 cosine squared x minus 2 sine squared x. Now the times 1 out front isn't really going to change anything, um, but I do have some arguments in these sine cosine functions that are a double angle, and over here I just have single angles, so I'm going to go ahead and convert these into double angles, so maybe it's a little bit easier to do. So let's go ahead and say negative 2 sine 2x, and then here 2 sine x cosine x, we might know a double angle formula, that's actually sine of 2x. Here negative 4 cosine 2x, and then 2 cosine squared x minus 2 sine squared x. Think about that as 2 cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And what is that? Do we recall cosine squared x minus sine squared x? Be careful, it's not 1, right? That's when we have plus, not minus. So here this one's going to be negative 2 sine 2x. We'll get a sine 2x here negative 4 cosine 2x, and this is actually an identity for cosine 2x, so we actually get 2 cosine of 2x there. Okay, let's go ahead and do our determinant. So this diagonal we would get negative 4 sine 2x cosine 2x, and then if I go ahead and do this diagonal, so we would get minus the other diagonal, which is negative 4 sine 2x cosine 2x. And I think you can see here, right, we have negative 4 sine 2x cosine 2x plus 4 sine 2x cosine 2x. We're going to get 0 here, so our Ronskian is 0. And since our Ronskian is 0, think about these three functions that we started with, 1 and cosine 2x and sine squared x. These are not linearly independent on the real number line. If you think about I can actually write one of these as a linear combination of the other. If you remember the double angle formula for cosine 2x that says cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So you can see I can write this one here, write this function as a linear combination of the other two. This is just a multiple of this, and obviously this is an exact copy of that. So that's why we get a Ronskian of zero on this one. All right, everybody, hopefully this helps you with calculating your Ronskians and determining linear independence using them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.